Hi, my name is Garrett, and I'm building a rocket controlled by imaginary numbers. Let me explain. This isn't your typical dinky rocket you find at your local hobby store. Instead of using fins to stabilize itself, it uses a method called thrust vector control. If you're not familiar with thrust vector control, you can imagine trying to balance a stick on your hand. To keep it upright, you have to move your hand around. Thrust vector control is a similar concept, except instead of moving your hand, you're moving the thrust of a rocket in order to keep it pointed in the desired direction. If you're into model rocketry or even just the industry in general, you'll know that this has been done many, many times before. So why am I doing it? Well, Elevate, the rocket I'm building, isn't the end goal. It's a stepping stone to something much, much bigger. Essentially what it is, it's a testing ground for me to validate ideas, like my control system, which is what I'll be talking about today. To be able to control the rocket to point in a desired direction, we first have to know our current orientation. You can't tell someone where to go without first knowing where they are. On Elevate, this is done using the BNO055 inertial measurement unit, which runs a fusion algorithm, giving us stuff like our angular velocity, our acceleration, and of course, our current orientation. In the future, I want to migrate to my own filter, possibly an extended common filter, but for now, this should work. The next step is to define how we're going to represent this orientation, because it will vastly affect our control design. We'd use a method like Euler angles, which is really intuitive, but has a downside of gimbal lock or rotation matrices or something else. For this project, I decided on quaternions, mainly for three reasons. One, they're very commonly used. Two, they're very computationally efficient. And three, because they avoid the issue of gimbal lock. If you don't know what quaternions are, they are a 4D number system made up of one real number and three imaginary numbers. That's the imaginary part I was talking about earlier. And they're used to represent spatial rotations. I won't get too much into the intuition behind them or how they work, because there's already a great resource by 3blue1brown. Check them out in the description. However, I will give you this. If you think back to our 3D unit vector, which is used to represent the position on the 3D unit sphere. Our 4D quaternions represent a position on the 4D hypersphere and in turn represent our orientation in 3D space. If that sounds confusing, that's because it is. Quaternions are inherently difficult to learn, which is why I'm leaving the teaching to someone much smarter than me. Now, if you're familiar with PID control, you may just think, Okay, I have my current position and I have my desired position. Let's just take the difference between them as the error we want to drive to zero. However, in quaternion land, it's not that simple. Let me define a couple things before I explain. Quaternions can be multiplied by one another, and this is equivalent to a single rotation to the final point if both are applied consecutively. Think of it like this. Let's say we have a quaternion defining a rotation from A to B, and then another quaternion defining a rotation from B to C. We can either rotate from A to B and then from B to C, or we can just define a single rotation from A to C. This is what quaternion multiplication is. Also, it's important to note that this multiplication is not commutative. If you change the order of multiplication, it still has the same final destination. However, the path of the rotation is in the opposite direction. The inverse of a quaternion times itself is one. And finally, you can rotate a vector using a quaternion using the following formula. With that out of the way, let's get into the controller. I've tried two ways of doing this. Let's start with the first. So how do we define our system error? Let's define a current position, QM, and a desired position, QREF. We know that there's a rotation we can take from QM, our current position, Q delta to get to our desired position, Q ref. Now solving for Q delta, we get that it equals the conjugate of our current orientation times our desired orientation. This is our Q error, our error term. Before we input this into any controller though, we first have to check to make sure that it's the shortest rotation to get to our destination. It doesn't make sense to go all the way around just to get the rocket to point where we want. If it's not the shortest path, we then take the conjugate of Q error to be our error. 
Then with this, we take the imaginary part of the vector to be our X, Y, and Z error. Now for the controller. For this rocket, I'm using a nonlinear P squared controller with an integral term. If you're familiar with PID control, this is essentially the same thing. We take the Q error, multiply it by gain, add it to the angular velocity, multiply it by gain, and then we add it to the integral for error multiplied by gain. Pretty similar to a PID controller. Altogether, this gives us an array of torques in the body axes that need to be applied to stabilize the system. The downside of using this method to calculate error is that it assumes roll authority. Although the system will stabilize, it is not an optimal rotation. Let me showcase this with a simulation. For obvious reasons, I don't think I'm allowed to fully showcase my Simulink model. So instead, here's a visualization of what happens when the rocket starts pitched over with a 45 degree roll. Theoretically, what should happen is the rocket should just move straight up. However, we can see one direction doesn't correct as fast as the other. This is what I meant when I said the rotation wasn't optimal. Now let's look at it with roll control. As we can see, it's much better. So what can we do to correct this? I struggled with this for a bit, and then after discussing the issue on Reddit, I found another method. Instead of using two quaternions, which represent absolute orientation, we use two vectors relative to the body. If you think about a typical three axis vector, it could care less about roll. It's Y and Z will always be Y and Z, which is perfect for what I need. So to calculate our error, let's first define our current orientation in the body frame. In this case, it will always be one, zero, zero. X will always be up for the rocket. Then let's define our desired orientation in the world frame. Let's call it zero, zero, one in this example, because we want it to go up. However, we first have to get this relative to the body. So we perform a vector rotation on our desired orientation by our current orientation, QM. Now, how do we compute the error? Well, if you think about it, there will always be an optimal rotation straight from the current orientation to the final orientation. Let's call this rotation angle theta. And what do you notice? We can say this rotation theta is about a vector orthogonal to both vectors. If you're familiar with vector calculus, you know that we can find this orthogonal vector by taking the cross product of both vectors. Using this, along with the magnitude of our vectors, we can construct a quaternion Q error representing the most optimal rotation. For reasons previously mentioned, I won't get too much into the quaternion math, but if you're interested, there's more on this in the description. Now, let's see how this compares to our original method. First, vertical, our control, then slightly pitched over. And finally, pitched over with a 45 degree roll and an initial angular velocity in the roll axis. As we can see, the second method works much better, which is why I ultimately chose it for flight one. It's important to note though, you can't use this to control roll. It's optimal rotation, assuming no roll control. So in the future, I will probably have to switch back to my original method. You may also notice that the rocket drifts after correcting itself. This is because at this stage, there is no position control, only attitude control. Finally, it's time to test this in the actual rocket. Let's put it together and do it. As we can see, the gimbal actuates in the direction the rocket needs to stabilize. Well, that's how I'm controlling a rocket. This method definitely isn't perfect and there's a lot I could improve, like switching to LQR, better filtering, etc. However, as I've said before, this rocket is just meant to test the basics. And with the control system out of the way, a launch date is hopefully really near. So keep your fingers crossed. If you want to hear more about the project or look into the paper on the actual controller I created, check out the description below. Well, that's all from me. This is Garrett signing off.